Good morning, everyone. Or I guess anytime you're you're accessing this video, right, guys? Hey, uh, we're getting ready to really get into our uh, timeline project here. We talked about uh, yesterday, which was the 4th of December, Monday. We talked about we're juggling two things right now. If you're on top of your game. If you haven't turned in your Zello or your Lesson 37 about Christianity, do you see how you're not juggling two things? You're juggling four things. Do you see the problem? Have you ever tried to juggle four balls at one time? I can barely do two at a time. How are you doing four at a time? Do you see what I'm trying to get you to do? I'm trying to get you to see that the first due date is the one you want to shoot for. If you keep putting things off every single time, it's going to just keep piling up. I hope you figure out that quickly. We've been talking about it all year. Now it's time to feel it. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm here for you. My Zoom's open every morning. If you need me, let me know. We're going to be using this rubric right here for our big timeline project. Okay, and I'm going to talk to the students about what the how many points these will be if this whole project is worth 200 points let's see one two three four five six seven divided by 200 i don't know what is that it's a little bit of points so we'll figure out how to fill in the points up here as a class um, i'm going to really be focusing in on documentation of evident or events okay and we're saying that 10 is what you need for the lowest a and it's not enough just to be able to draw your time. You actually have to be able to explain these 10 events in detail to a small group of students after you show them your This Is Me video or slideshow or presentation. Okay, we're gonna start with the This Is Me. So you introduce yourself to your whole team, and then you're gonna be doing your information with your timeline, okay? So you can't just make a timeline, you have to understand the events. Make sure you understand that, because if you just make a really good timeline and you can't explain it, that's a C. Does that make sense? Think long and hard about how you want to have your end game work for you. Are you going to understand and learn, or are you just going to make something? Okay, documentation. Again, if you're looking for the biggest uh, number of points, you're going to click right here. If you're looking for the next number, you're going to click, you're going to have this, eight to nine events. If you have six to seven events that are high quality, then you get this many points, five, et cetera, et cetera. And that pattern goes through as we continue down this list. The second thing I'm looking for are content and facts. Facts were accurate for all events reported on the timeline, and you're able to explain every single event in detail. Okay? Not asking you to become an expert. I'm asking you to do more than surface level research, to have meaningful conversations with people who did not study your area of expertise, sort of. Okay, so think about that. Documentation and content go together. Accuracy, how accurate were you with your dates? Did you use CE and BCE or did you use the old AD and BC? Notice this one is blank. I'm going to let every student choose their own. It could be drawing. It could, what, what's your passion? What are you good at? How would you fill out this that would fit these patterns? Do you see what I mean? You have to fill out each box. Think about that. We'll talk more about that as we get to it the next week or so. I'm also looking for sentence fluency, uh, grammar, and all of that stuff should be accurate. Notice we've been talking a lot about all of you are doing a phenomenal job of being accurate about your work, but the way you present your work doesn't allow the reader to feel your professionalism, if that makes sense. You're not capitalizing the first letter of each sentence. You're not punctuation, punctuating. You're not spelling things correctly. That doesn't make any sense, guys. You got to work on that. You got to really, really, really work on that. That's a big problem with this group. You're great writers, but you don't really put in the effort when it comes down to the minor details. And that's how people judge you as a writer. They judge your reputation as a writer by, you know, first impressions. Okay. And if you have everything spelled wrong and you don't have capitalization and grammar and you're not restating stuff, people aren't going to really pay attention to you. 
The next thing we're going to focus on is style, Riz, an organization. Okay? If you want the most points, you're going to look at this area, you next points, etc. You know the pattern, you see it. And then mechanics, of course. That's what I was talking about earlier with um, spelling, etc. So I really see mechanics connecting directly um, to sentence fluency. Okay, and I think mechanics, if I was being 100% honest, that's where you would struggle as a team, as a group. And I would say all of my classes struggle with this. Some students more than others, and that seems reasonable. Make sure you um, put your first and last name and your hour on this page. Notice it's at the bottom instead of at the top. This is just some information to get your juices flowing about timelines, get you thinking about what needs to happen. And these are really super awesome links. This is going to help you. If you're struggling at all and you missed any of our lessons about timelines, all of these will help you. Make sure you watch these videos. This is what we're going to be working on next, okay? And this is actually documenting. After you've been giving your, um, assigned your official time period, now you're going to write your official, and this could change over time. It's not set in stone. What is your official title at this time for your timeline? Okay, so it would be something like um, the Roman Empire, Constantine's rule. And then tell me what year it started and what year it ended. And don't forget to have correct BCE and CE. And then what you're going to do is do some basic events. Okay, and this is where I said to talk to your parents about what is your family belief and values about AI. This is the perfect time to train your parents to trust you and ask them what their opinion is about AI. Does that make sense? Because I really do feel that uh, schools aren't going to address this issue and you are using AI. I see it. So I think you need to talk to your parents about that. And then you need to stop and think, what is it? How can you use AI as a tool and not a toy? How could you use it as a tool to deepen your understanding and learning instead of just taking a shortcut to get the events? Do you see the people that use AI and don't do the actual learning are just going to make a timeline? That's what I was talking about. Making a great timeline is a C. Why is that? Because you need to know in depth about each of those events if you're looking to get an A. Making the timeline is half the battle. Understanding and teaching other people is the other half. Make sure you do a whole instead of just a half project. Do you feel me? Okay. So you're going to do some research. And I said, how do you know if you're ready for AI? Well, first of all, you're going to talk to your family about your family values. That makes the most sense at this point in time because the school hasn't made any official um, opinion other than you can't cheat. And, you know, using AI in certain ways would be considered cheating. But I do see a way that it could be used as a tool. And I said, why don't you try this? This will help you determine if you're ready to talk to your parents about AI and maybe start thinking about using it as a tool. Or are you more of an immature learner at this point and you're using it as a way to do a shortcut and just get a grade? Why don't you try this, guys? If you know what your timeline is about and you know what the years are, and you do because you just did this and you just did this, why don't you just do an image search for timelines for your topic and the years? Come up with at least three safe, reliable websites like Britannica that give you a timeline. If you can come up with three, three is the magic number in school, guys. It always is. Three websites that give you the same information, that's called triangulation. Once you've triangulated evidence, you can now say that it's almost certain that that's true. But you have to find three credible sources to be able to call triangulation, triangulation. Okay, so if you look for three different timelines, here's an example. Let's go and do one for you. Okay, let's do a Constantine, right? Let's do Roman Empire, uh, Constantine, Constantine. Um, he was an emperor. Um, I don't know the years, so let's do timeline of uh, major events. So if you can do this and do an image search and you can find three um, websites that have the same information, those 10 events probably are good events. Now, they may not be the 10 that you use in the end because you might come across better ones. But if you can start with those 10 and you can actually find the 10 events, 
use the three pictures to help you fill in this right here, these 10 events. Once you've done that, now you can go back using your timeline information, not as a shortcut, well, kind of as a shortcut, isn't it? But it's a reasonable shortcut because you're still going to go into deep research. You're just saving time on the upfront research. All research projects have a beginning research where you just find the basic information in order to come up with your events. And then you have to delve deeper into those events. So if you're using AI or image searches, um, to deal with that first step of basic research to get the events, that seems like it's a reasonable use of AI and a reasonable use of image searches. Um, and I think that that seems like it's a tool, don't you? You're not taking, you're not trying to cheat, you're not trying to not learn, you're just trying to save some time so you can put the time into your deep learning of the 10 events instead of spending all your time up front trying to find the 10 events. Do you see how we can use Google image searches in a similar way to AI? Try the Google image search this time and not use AI. After you've done that, go and talk to your parents about what you just did and how you used it as a tool and then ask them how you could integrate AI into that same kind of philosophy. Or does that go against what your family values are? Again, stop and talk to your family. That's the key right now, guys, with AI, okay? I can see that it could be used as a tool for sure, okay? So use, I'm suggesting you try to find at least three timelines with the same information on it. And you, the key is to find credible sources like Britannica, um, History Channel, you don't want something like uh, Mr. Uh, Jim Stearns to crazy teacher, uh, dot com. Okay. So that's what I would use to get the events. And then once I had this completely filled out, now I would go and dig deeper into each one of the events. Now that makes the AI or the Google images worthwhile and a tool and not a toy. You're not trying to find shortcuts. You're just trying to save time so you can invest the time where it's most important for your project. And that's right here on these 10 events. I want you spending most of your time understanding these events so you can explain it to your partners because not everybody's gonna do the same timeline and we'd love for everybody to um, learn more about other things. Maybe they'll wanna do a project in the future about that. Let's see how long this is. It seems, ooh, it's already 12 minutes. All right, I just wanted to kind of give you guys an update. Uh, we're moving on. We'll start talking about this next week. We've already talked about this, and this is what we're starting today. And today is the 5th of um, December. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye. I think this is video three, isn't it, for the project? Yeah.